Okay, so what we have is um, we're going to do the update, turning that into function. So at the moment, if we have a look, I click on update, we get a list of stuff, I can get an edit, I can change that, um, click on the update, name gets changed, go back to index. If I do a quick read, I now have my last person. Okay, now that's all well and good. But, here's the thing, okay, we go index to edit to ed to update and back to index. So what we want to do is we want to merge these three files, okay. So we have one page that basically self-feeds onto itself, self-feeds itself and makes it a bit simpler for the system to work with. So the first thing we've got to do is turn stuff into functions for us. Okay, so this is our edit page, which is the first page that comes up. I've got index link as a function, which I made in uh, one of the previous videos. I have my functions listed here. I have my linking to the database here. Okay. Remember, this turns off any warning notices or that will occur if a variable doesn't exist when you are give when you self feed the form back to itself. So what we do is we take this out. Okay. We c basically copy it. I then go into the functions and I paste it into this guy right here. Okay? So what it does is now I take my list edit students and I can put that there. Okay, so now we test the functionality again. So I go back to my local host, I hit the update. Right, so it's still listed everything for me, which is exactly what we want. Awesome. Now, one of the things that is slightly different to that is that this no longer goes to ed. Alright, so if we look here, if we went from edit to ed, I'm now sending the information back to edit. So from here, we need to capture these variables of information. So I'll go to here. Oh, I've got it here. Let's take this. Doink. Copy and paste. Excellent. Okay, so these are gets. Why are they gets? Because when I save this page and run it up, click on the edit, the information gets placed up the top here. Okay, so what we do is we get the information from the address bar. If we post it, this would just say php, uh, edit.php and nothing else. Okay, so as you can see when we reload it back to here, it reruns this bit of coding here. So, now we need to change this a little bit. So if we put an if statement in here, where if uh, dollar sign student ID is greater than zero, um, what we can do, put the else in, that there, and we'll put an echo information in address bar. Okay, so this is dummy text. Okay, so this lists the uh, students. Now, so this doesn't exist until after this is run. Okay, so let's save that and check it. So I jump in here, go back to index, hit my update, should get my list, I click edit, information in address bar. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay? So now, let's take that back to the index and go back to here. This is good. So in here we need to put the actual uh, the form. So what we've done is we've sent the information back to itself and I believe that's here in ed. So this is our form. Okay, so I'll take a copy of that and we can put that here. Okay, so let's have a look at that little note again. So if I do it this way, we go to index, we then go to a list of students, then we go to a form that we can fill out, then we update the database, and then we can go back to the index. 
Okay, so that's what these pages do. At the moment, we're now putting these onto the one page. Cool. So let's test it, but first we've got to make sure. So this is student ID, student ID, first name, last name. Okay, so let's save that. Come back to here, go to update. We should get our list. Excellent. Edit should now take us to our form. Notice how it's filled that out. Okay, that's what all those are. Um, all this extra bit of code here is all about. So this is the value. So here we get it from the address bar and here we put it inside the text box. Now what we want to do is we want to have it so that when we hit the submit button, okay, which is what happens here, so we've got to change that to submit button, okay, we want it so that it comes back to itself and then it performs this type of update. Now, this itself is a function. So what I've already done is I've actually made this function here called function update, which is the code just copied and pasted. Okay, but I think we can make this even easier. We'll just pull this out and we'll pull this bit out. Okay, and instead of saying field, let's just change this to the actual name of first name and this is last name okay so we'll get rid of that line get rid of that line now I'm just going to add numbers here so we'll say 2 and 2 and 2 just to ensure that they are different okay student ID first name last name student ID is the unit first name goes there that goes there excellent good so back to here now, when we're submitting to itself, we're going to have to do this as an if. Okay, so what we'll do is we put inside here, right, if it is not a submit, so if it's not posted unto itself, then I want to run this echo. Okay? Else, echo, update database. Alright, so we're testing it now. So what will happen is we come into here, we create our link, student is greater than zero, we run this, if it's not we list our students, okay? Now that will probably not work properly to start off with. So let's have a look, if I update, here's my list of students, excellent, I click on the edit button, it gives me that, I hit the submit button, now this let me just check the code. It's not going to work because I'm send, not sending it to the right spot. Okay. Um, let's see. That should not be that. It should be... Let's get rid of that. Uh, single quote, double dot, single quote. And then here we want dot score, underscore, server. Oop, e for server. And we're putting in php underscore self. Okay, so that tells it to come back. Save it. Let's rerun it again. Let's go back. Update. There's our list. We hit the edit button. Fills this out. Now, this should feed back into, so that should stay as edit. Update. Notice how we've got the list again. And we're on edit, so we went to the right page. So we loop back to here, but we skipped this part here. Okay? Because student ID, even though we submitted it, didn't come through also doesn't help with the fact that we didn't actually collect any information up here. So, what we need is the variables to get it. Oop. Let's tidy it properly. So, there. Now, we need to put in a hidden field, like so. Okay, so student, first name, last name, first name, last name, student. Okay, so now when it gets into here, we've created this thing called SID that does it. Okay, um, we'll update database, and what we'll do is we'll put in um, SID dot 
space dot dollar sign fn dot space up that sign ln. All right, so let's test that again. Okay. Yep, it's all saved. Jump back to here. Go back to index. With PHP, you just go back to the index and go again because it rebuilds the form every time you go in. So update. Here's my list. Edit should take me to the form. Change the name. Click on the update. We've got our list. Now, that was expected. The reason is, this is student ID. Okay? And when we run this part of the code here, the form that feeds unto itself, this doesn't get filled out at all. Okay? It no longer exists. So what we can do is we'll modify our if statement. Okay? This one right here. And we'll add in to check whether or not the actual submit button's been pushed. Okay, so this is an OR. Okay, so it says if student ID is greater than zero or the p or we've actually hit the submit button, okay, because this is going to end up false. This is not going to work when that form hits. But this, on the other hand, will not equal null because we will have hit the submit button. So I expect to see that on the next run through. So let's save that jump back here, let's go to index, update, I should get my list, I should hit my edit, I should get my form, excellent. I'll change the name to Clark, I hit update, and we should get the wrong thing. Dun dun. Okay, let me go back and look at this code again. Ha, classic. Classic, classic, classic. Okay, let me just um, recopy that line, but then we'll undo it to here, because that line should have been here. Okay, so I put that on the wrong spot. That specifically makes this section and this section kick in. This is the one that gets us into that loop. Okay, so let's save it again. Update, so listing, form, now this should come back and give us that um, details on the screen. Update database 7. Okay, that's a good thing. Okay, so the information is coming through. So if I look at this now, okay, this gets us to here. Now, why did I ne not get the username and the uh, last name? That's because I'm feeding FN and LN uh, here. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so let's save it, jump back in, recheck it again. So update, so there's our list, we edit, change the name, and now we should get 7 Clark Kent. Excellent. So now that we know that this part comes in, which is where the update kicks in, we go back to here, grab the function update. Okay, so what's going to do is going to jump in, update the student table. It's going to set the first name to equal whatever gets piped in here, where the unique ID, so the student ID, is whatever's piped into here. So now we jump back to here and we replace that like so. Okay. So what I can do is just to make it a bit more readable, we'll put that into curly braces and we'll go echo uh, student has been updated. Okay, save that, but that's LN, FN, and SID. Okay, so that's all saved. Jump, update. So we'll edit Jonathan Kent. So notice we're still here on the edit page. Clark Kent, update. Still on the edit page. Student has been updated. Let's do a quick read. Clark Kent. Excellent. So there we go. So that's updating it all on one page. So what we've done is we've taken these three pages and now we go index to edit back to index. So that's a much cleaner website. Excellent. I'm out of here. Boink.